when I first booted up Toho Lost Word, expected a fun time sink that leaned into Toho fandom to establish itself, as quite a few Toho fan games do. What I did not expect was one of the best narratives of any Toho fan work ever published. Writing a good Toho story is no easy feat, for as good as Toho Luna Nights is, the actual writing of the game leaves a lot to be desired since it tends to be pretty stale. Toho Lost Word, meanwhile, crafts a lot of its dialogue to be true to both the characters it represents and the narrative it's trying to craft. Not every part of the writing is a home run, of course, but it's impressive that so much of it does work. So, join me on the first episode of the Toho Lost Word story review, where I took a look at what parts of the story succeed and what parts miss the mark a bit. Before the story even technically begins, the game already does two key things right. First, the app icon. Having the icon be Marissa may not seem like a big deal, but she appears as the icon of every mainline Toho bullet hell game. Even from the icon, the game tries to instill the spirit of Toho into itself. And then next? Oh! The game forces you to be a girl! That's brilliant! Even with the self-insert, the balance of Toho's world is kept intact. So before the writing even begins, the game is already taking steps to match Toho's soul. But, then how does the actual writing open? A bit boring, honestly. The first scene of the game involves the Avatar encountering Patrioli and Alice, two popular characters from the franchise. And... They kind of just talk about being magicians and Marissa being a pain, and they set up a tea party? You don't really get to know much about their personalities, so from a newcomer's perspective, it's confusing, and from a veteran Toho player's perspective, it's just boring. But the writing does get better when Marissa arrives on the scene. Patroli and Alice just assume that Marissa invited a guest that arrived early, which is the Avatar. When Marissa sees the Avatar, she clearly doesn't know who they are, but she rolls with the guest idea anyways. Marissa also, as usual, is great at making conversation. She knows Patrioli brought the tea, and Alice made the sweets because she's been friends with them for so long, which, also as usual, unwittingly charms the pair. While Alice and Patchy don't give the best first impression, Marissa certainly does. And then, Rainbow arrives. She greets the Avatar happily, which is good. A lot of Toho fanworks tend to depict Rainbow as sort of antisocial due to her work as a Shrine Maiden. As we learn through Toho canon, Rainbow is definitely a bit odd, but she's still a friendly person. Rainbow then talks about how she's going around collecting seal crystals because they could be dangerous. Marissa immediately jumps at the chance for adventure. Reimu, with no hesitation, tells Marissa that she should just enjoy the tea party, but Marissa insists on going. And so, they leave with the Avatar. After the first section, the writing sees a substantial boost in quality. One of the most important things this game gets right is the bond between Reimu and Marissa. The two bicker constantly through the story, and you can tell they're always having fun while they argue. There's four sentences in this section that encapsulates their relationship perfectly. Me and Reimu go way back. Only because you keep sticking around. Of course I do. There's no better way to keep myself entertained. Their chemistry works fantastically. Also in this section of the story, we see another strength of Lost Word. A lot of its characterization is really good. Ikari emerges out of a barrier to talk about the Lost Word incident. She talks sorta... sing-songy. You can tell that she knows what's going on, but also that she's approaching the situation with a sorta... lackadaisical attitude. She is willing to get just serious enough so that Reimu would do her job, but she's still playing around. The highlight for her is definitely when she tries to give the Avatar a name. She wants the Avatar to be called Lossie, since they've lost their memories. And she's quite proud of the name, too. This disastrous pick leads to the Avatar immediately remembering their name. 
Last Words Yukari is funny, mysterious, and at times, scary. In two scenes, Last Word ensures that the player knows who Yukari is, even if they never played any other Toho game. Yukari told Reimu that the seal crystals may have already been found by other powerful beings in Gensokyo, so the rest of the story involves Reimu and Rissa traveling around to locations from Toho 6, 7, and 8 in order to find these seal crystals. We get to see a lot of the characters from these games, which helps to introduce new Toho fans to one of the most popular eras of the series. Characterizations in these parts ranges from okay to fantastic. There are four specific parts of this section that I remember well, so I'll talk about those. First up, we have Remilia's sunscreen. As Marissa notes, vampires can't usually stay out in the sunlight. This is a rule generally followed in Toho canon and fanworks. So, how is Remilia out with them both in gameplay and in story? Well, the answer is quite simple. Sakia found a super strong sunscreen from the outside world. It's stronger than any human would ever need. She even jokes about the possibility of vampires living in the outside world. It's a super zany explanation and I wouldn't have it any other way. It totally feels in line with the logic of Gensokyo, and I'm happy that the game went out of its way to explain why the sun doesn't affect Vermilia. Secondly, there's Yuyuko. Like Yukari, the game does a great job of introducing Yuyuko. She's super friendly to the Avatar when they arrive, and is also enthusiastic about the Suo Crystals. When she talks about trying to eat them, Yomu, of course, begs Yuyuko not to. Even Romilia tells Yuko that she's gone too far, but Yuko also mentions her second plan. She hopes that the energy from the crystals is enough to generate spring to view the blossom from the legendary Sakura tree. The group tries to stop her because they know it'd likely end in disaster. Yuko is very hopeful about the entire situation, and a bit scatterbrained as well, but importantly, She's not malicious. All she really wants is a good meal, and the chance to be with the Sakura blooming of a lifetime. Third, there's Yomu's observation. After gathering some people to help with the seal crystal incident, Reimu and the group reach the bamboo forest of the lost. Yomu then realizes that the people with them are the same people that handled the imperishable night incident from Toho 8. They're only missing Yukari and Yuyuko. It's a cute way to bring many of Toe's most popular characters together, while also paying tribute to an older game. Finally, there's how the incident ends. Eren and Kaguya think that they should take care of the seal crystals, but Reimu disagrees. Instead of rushing to violence, however, Reimu explains why she thinks the seal crystals would be best in her hands. Not only does she have a gut feeling, but she also realizes that the crystals have a connection to the Akure barrier. That's the only place where instead of exploding, they unseal. Kaguya and Eren are two of the most thoughtful characters in the series, so they hear Reimu out and decide she's right. They're impressed by her wisdom. There's no final boss fight for the actual crystals. Instead, Reimu is able to successfully get them back because of her own careful observations and her position as a shrine maiden. It's moments like these that tell you why Reimu is Toho's main protagonist. Of course, a fight still happens, but it is instead a sort of rite of passage for Reimu to ensure that she can take care of the crystals properly.
So from Lost Words Prologue, we get a nice story with a pretty fun tone that stays in line with Toho, and also demonstrates a competent understanding of its characters. This alone would already make Toho Lost Words narrative pretty strong when compared to other fan games, and it was enough to convince me to keep playing. But, the story also does something else extremely important. It sets up a false premise. It gives the impression that the story is going to be about Reimu, Marissa, and Yu traveling around Gensokyo to collect all the seal crystals. Which would be a pretty standard structure to follow for a gacha game. This false sense of where the narrative is going to go makes the next section of the story all the more shocking. But we'll be looking at that another time. This has been my first Lost Word Story review. Thanks for watching.